All right, we're going to have a play. We've got some experimenting I want to do. We're putting different finishes, different ways of decorating eco pour. So let's go. So first thing to do is get some eco pour into some into some moulds, and I've just picked out a selection of any old moulds. Now, excuse me if I sound a bit funny. I've still got a terrible cold. <laughs> Right, let's turn these out and we can have a play. So, we all know Eco Pour. Nice and white. I'm not too bothered if there are some bubbles in the uh, sides of these, by the way. So, I've got some more curing over here. Let's try this one. First of all, what I want to try is just acrylic paint. Now, we know acrylics work on Eco Pour. They just do, we know that. However, I wanted to see what happened if I tried using them like as a watercolour. And I've got an old mould here that we're going to be using as my palette. I've got some perfectly ordinary acrylic paint. This is the Windsor & Newton one. And the colour is Naples yellow, which is more like a, it's like a really pale, subtle, goldy, creamy, don't quite know what you call it. And then this is a Deco Art, one of the metallics. Now again, I know that metallic acrylics work on Eco Pore. What I am wanting to try is see what happens if we dilute them and use them almost as a watercolour. So that's very diluted. Could have been more diluted than that, I think. But then again, there was quite a lot on my brush. Okay, let's get it more diluted and more diluted <laughs> so it's absorbing in much like it would on plaster which is what I was thinking I would probably see okay so that works I'm going to try a few different things here. I want to see what happens if you flood it with water and then drop the colour in as well. Okay, let's see what the metallics do. And again, we'll get that really diluted. Yeah, but is it metallic? We'll see when it's dry. But some of this is going on top of the yellow. Some's just going on top of the white. We'll see if that makes any difference. I might be able to try most of these techniques just on this one actually. So let's let's see how it goes. Now, what I can actually see from the angle I'm looking at, and I don't know if you can, let me just back off and have a look at the cameras. No, you can't, uh, but let me show you in a second. Hold on. But what I can see is that this metallic is working. I wish I hadn't put so much yellow there. Right, let's see. Ah, there you go. That is the metallic, that is not wet, that's drying pretty quickly. Can you see the metallic? So that's interesting in itself. Right, next thing to try then, once that's dry, is uh, I'm going to try working on top of that. And we're going to do that with some outliner paste. And what I've got here is a, a gold one, a silver one and a black one. These are from Peebo. First of all, we're going to go in with a gold one. Now, have I even opened this? Yes. Now, outliner paste, for those who don't know, it's a 3D thing and it is, um, I should squeeze some of this out first by the look of it. Looks like we're going to get liquid first. Oh, this hasn't been used before. There we are. Or if it has, it hasn't been for a long time. So yeah, it's a 3D outliner paste and it is usually better than this. 
<laughs> it will dry 3D. It's useful for glass painting and things like that, and I really am not very good with it. I'm very out of practice. There we are, we're getting there, we're getting there. I'll get back into practice in a minute. Now, being water based, what I'm thinking is, will it adhere adequately to the eco pore? Oh dear, I really do need to get some practice in with this, don't I? I was thinking I'd just do nice leaf shapes, but that's not going so well, is it? So, will it adhere to the eco pore? My hand is shaking because I want to squeeze this so much. <laughs> uh, and there's no way of uh, like shaking it up like you would a bottle of paint or whatever. Anybody who uses this stuff regularly, will you tell me how you uh, keep it okay? Because this is a, this is a bottle tube that I've had kicking around for a while, but it's. Uh, that's well, certainly not an old tube. So there we've got some leaves. I'm going to let that dry and then we'll have a play with it. Okay. I'm now snookered until the next lot are cured. I wonder what the silver's like. Let's try the silver. Oh, that might be better. Let's do some silver leaves as well. Oh yeah, that's coming out a lot better. You can cut the tube down. If you want it to come out a bit thicker, you could cut the tube down a bit. Once I've got the hang of doing this and I've worked out what works and what doesn't, I'm going to make one with a bigger bottle and uh, with a bigger sorry a bigger mold and we'll we'll do something that's more like a finished piece but I think this is giving me enough to play with the other thing I want to try is then can I kind of watercolor into into the leaves now of course this is still wet so I think that's, that might be a yes so we'll, we'll sort of see how that goes but I do want to try as well what, a, what just flood coating it comes out like I mean with water first and then dropping the acrylic on yes it will take longer to dry I know it will hmm that's got potential hasn't it I do need to stop though and uh, let this cure it takes about an hour usually um, the 3D paste does she says just carrying on you know what I'm like I get impatient. Oh well. While it's wet, you can blend it. By the way, just if you, if you need to know that, because it's basically it's an acrylic. So looking, push. I'm pushing it back with my brush here where it was too thick. I'm blending it in with the paint. Yeah, don't know if it's helpful to know that, but there you are. In case you do need to know that. So I think you can see where we're going with this. Uh, I'm going to experiment with different ways of getting that background in and then uh, painting onto it. So we've got our other pieces to play with. As soon as those are cured we'll have a little go and then we will end up with uh, an idea for my final piece. Right back soon. So where are we up to? This has dried and it is well and truly stuck onto the little tray which I'm really pleased with because I wasn't sure if the outline of paste would and the paint yep yeah. I think some of the metallic might be coming off but we'll see anyway next one I wanted to try uh, and let's go for let's go for these round ones was I wanted to try flooding one out with water first uh, not 
flood, uh, not, oh, what am I trying to say? Not fill it with water, but just wet it all first and then drop colours onto it to see what happens with the, yeah, the way it spreads. And I'm still liking my, these subtle colours that I've got here. So I've still got, I've got some browns and, and the blue um, and the creamy colour. Let's just see what happens with those. And I've got the green as well. So let's mix some up first. So let's pull, pull a little bit out. Now this is a nice metallic blue. We've got our metallic green, which is a nice subtle colour. And then we've got, this is a Winsor & Newton one that I used earlier, and it is called Naples Yellow, which is basically a soft gold, a bit more than I intended, soft gold colour. And then I thought I'd dig this out. This is from Colvin & Co., I can't remember where I got this from. It's a cheap one, I think. So, you know, it'll be from... Just from, one of the, you know, cheapy shops like the works or something like that, probably. So there's our colours that we're going to be playing with. Now, water. Got my little pot. And I'm just going to... Let's just do one of these. Just going to wet the surface. So not completely flooding it or drowning it, I'm just damping it. Now, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's absorbing straight into the surface. So I'm just putting a bit more. It's very absorbent, that's already drying. Now I want to see, does this behave differently because of that? So this is what I was kind of thinking, can I, while that surface is still down, I'm going gonna, gonna to need to flood it, can I get this to like sit on the water, so yeah I am putting a lot more in than I intended to, and I'm sort of going to mix it on the surface, run some more water over it, I wanted to get like a sort of a watery, smudgy, I don't know if this is making any sense to you lot. I am doing making it up as I go along as usual. And you can see that it's actually working its way around the rim. It likes the rim. I don't know why. Okay, so that's kind of working. Now, it's still drying on the surface. Get the tissue out. I'll have a wonder wipe in this case. So I'm going to wet it again. Now I'm going to go for a little bit of the tiny little bit of the blue, which I'm mixing some water in with. Well, unfortunately I've got some on the rim there, let's get that off. And it's stained it. I'll show you what to do about that actually, when you get on eco pour, when you get, uh, you know, colour where you didn't want it. There is a simple solution. Okay, just going with more water. I'm getting like a beach feel here. It wasn't what I was really intending, but <laughs> I don't know what I was intending, to be fair. As I said, make it up as I go along. Always good fun. This is what I was intending actually for all of these effects really are backgrounds for doing things like I did with those leaves. Oh look that's gone really odd in the middle and I don't know why. Isn't that strange? I don't know what that's doing. Anyway. So what we're effectively doing is staining the surface here. That's gone really odd in the centre. Yeah, I was going to show you what to do when you get eco, uh, on eco pour or any other similar surface. If you get a, a bit of colour where you don't want it, probably ought to wait till this dries first really, but just get a nail file and take it off. Now as long as it hasn't absorbed all the way through, you should be able to just lift it off if it's just the surface. There you go. Now 
I don't know why that's gone patchy in the middle but it's kind of weird and interesting so let's put that to one side to dry now uh, this one I'm going to try actually just properly painting onto the surface and I'm going to sit down I've got a new chair I don't know if you noticed but a lot of the time I don't know if you can tell actually a lot of the time I'm actually standing up when I'm doing my creations um, I find I get a good angle to see what I'm doing if I stand up however um, sometimes it's good to sit down <laughs> Also, I, I like to be able to look down and see what my phone is seeing and therefore what you are seeing, which you can't always do when you're sitting down. Right, let's try just putting this acrylic paint straight onto the surface. I'm going to just do leaves. And don't forget, these are metallic acrylics as well, these particular ones, the blue and the green. So you're going to get some sort of strange effects. Now the question is, will it stay on the surface? I've recently seen um, Claire's Crafty Corner. Uh, Claire's had a go about putting... Well, using silk screens with acrylics, I believe it's acrylics, um, onto... Was it resin Crete? I think it was resin Crete. And of course, as well, when she tried to seal it, it all kind of smudged. So I wondered if EcoPore behaved any differently. Because I must admit, I haven't. I've done. I've painted surfaces of EcoPore before, but I've not tried to seal it. And I've certainly not tried these metallic paints on it. So this is a bit of a, a combination test thing. Now once I've decided which of these techniques I'm going to like I shall be proceeding to do something interesting with one of these other trays, the big, the slightly bigger one. I might even get brave and do one of the big moulds and shapes trays. I don't know. We'll see. So these leaf shapes I'm just doing, as you can see, kind of ellipses and doing a bit pointy at one end, nothing over fancy and clever. It's a very easy shape to do, not doing any detail or anything. Right, so this one, because I didn't worry too much about bubbles, it's got a load of bubbles around the edges which is mildly annoying I have to say, but it is what it is. Now I'm going to mix up a slightly softer brown because I now want to touch in some little bits of little bits of stem. Which I'm just going to take very slightly onto the leaf. This is quite a thick paintbrush for me. I don't know if any of you know my the arty part of my background. Um, I, when I went through school, it was quite obvious that I was art was going to be my thing. Academically, I was I was pretty decent too. Um, but I was certainly had a thing for art. Always did. I was one of these kids that whatever you got me for Christmas, oops. <laughs> whatever you got me for Christmas I was probably more interested in making something out of the box it came in knowing the audience that I have here you people you crafty people you will get this I bet you were the same anyway I then as I went through school it's like yeah I, I did academically other than maths I did academically well but ultimately I decided to go to art college so I did a year at art college um, after I'd done my A-levels and it was all, it was, it was really nice. I met some wonderful people at art college and it, some very talented people and it became pretty obvious to me that 
art for me was something I loved doing, but I was never going to make a career of. Um, my graphic friends who went into graphic design have made proper careers of it. They were far more talented than me. Now, and the, the main reason was the stuff that I loved doing really wasn't going to be something that was overly commercial unless you were exceptionally good. Um, wildlife illustration, things like that. So to come back to the paintbrush sizes, um, most of the brushes I had in stock from when I still used to play about with wildlife art and things like that are five, five naught size brushes. So to me, this is quite a big brush. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yes. Um, and you know what? There was an idea that computer graphics would take over the world and there wouldn't be much of a, a calling for graphic designers going forward. Well, of course, a lot of graphic design is done on computer now. Um, but it's taken until really this year before AI, AI art to take over the world. <laughs> I don't know if it quite has yet, but I mean, I'm using AI, AI art for things. I actually am rather in love with AI <laughs> at the moment. Largely because it hasn't tried to kill me or anything yet. I'm just finding it useful for various things. Anyway, what do you think of that? What do you think of that? Let me bring that up to the camera. I rather like that so far. So that's just painting straight onto the surface. And I'm not going to put any more coats on that. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now, this one has dried, sort of. Now, I put a lot of water on there, didn't I? And you can see it's gone all sort of kind of patchy. And I don't know why there's this weird dark bit in the middle don't know what's going on there but again I wanted it as a background so for this one um, I don't quite know what shapes I'm going to do on this one hmm. I'm quite liking doing the leaves actually because we said it looked kind of aquatic didn't we we said it looked aquatic yeah let's do some seaweed make it look a bit sort of water's edge rock pool sort of that sort of thing. Anyway, sometime, at some point, back to my art college story, yeah, at some point I decided that I was never going to make it as an artist. Um, and whilst I'd applied to and been accepted at a couple of polytechnics, because that's kind of where you went to rather than university for the sort of art that I was looking at. Um, I decided my heart wasn't really in it and, you know, mum and dad were being totally broke having to pay for me going through college and all that sort of thing. I wasn't sure whether I'd get a grant or not. And it just seemed to me time to call it quits. So I did. Anyway, then that begged the question, what are you going to do then? Mum and Dad were behind me whatever I decided to do. I mean, I just had the most amazing parents. And anyway, I started just looking at jobs in the local paper. I was 19 by this point. And a job had come up at a local insurance broker's. And I thought, oh, that's where we insure my little car. Because I've got a little car by this point. My granddad's old car. And uh, I thought, insurance. It's all to do with cars and stuff, isn't it? That's about all I knew about insurance. And I applied for this job as an office junior. And well, there launched a career. A couple of years later on, I applied to work at the company that I was working for until I was made redundant at the age of 52 and took the opportunity to kind of semi-retire. And I said to my other half, I know, I'll go and mess about at the museum. He said, do that, that's a good idea. And then we had COVID and we had a lockdown and I still... And I missed the museum, so I obviously went back and got myself some more shifts there. More recently, I reached the age where I could start drawing on my old company pension, which I'd done my best to pay in for. I hadn't paid in the full time, and obviously I was retiring early, so, you know, I was never going to be earning... Um, I was never going to be drawing, like, a full pension from it. But what did it did mean was that I could afford to do a bit less at the museum and mess about doing this and well thank you to 
<laughs> thanks to all you lot and your support well guess what's happened guess what's happened I'm now finding that this is starting to pay its way as well brilliant eh? anyway that conversation was all because I was telling you about five nought size paintbrushes so let's have a look at what we've got so far uh, it's kind of a question. that looks a bit like a fish in the background doesn't it you know what I'm going to do a fish let me find some black paint deco art gloss enamel black mm. yeah so um, for the first time in my life actually I'm able to be doing stuff that I just doing it because I love doing it and I can afford to do that I mess about with cars and I do this which is just amazing isn't it now let's do angelfish remember what shape angel fish are here kind of like that gonna hide it behind these plants somewhat anyway Mm -hmm. Yeah, good job I'm hiding it behind plants. I really should be looking at one when I'm trying to paint one, shouldn't I? And angelfish are kind of silver. Well, your, your Amazon angelfish are. That's really not good, is it? Not good? What do you think? Not good. Anyway, don't care. Silver. White pearl, that'll do. A lot of this angelfish I'm going <laughs> to have to hide because that's really bad. Let's smudge it out a little bit. I could paint once, you know. I will show you some of my stuff. Art College were never impressed with it. <laughs> right, let's see what we've got now. There we go, white pearl. another deco art metallic paint Now, angelfish tend to have red eyes. Well, your wild angel variety do anyway. And the black line tends to go through that eye. So, let's put a little red dot. And then we'll take our black line straight back through it. a little bit where I've got the shape a bit off. Now, 
the full breeding size Allium Angel Boy, like my big guy is, tends to have a slight tinge of red in its silver. So, and it's along its back here. So let's just put a tiny tint of red in with the silver there. Just the tiniest bit. To say he's looking very showy at the moment. He's the one whose missus keeps laying eggs. This well, this time around it is. <laughs> Back in with the green. You'll notice this paint I'm working I tend I have this horrible habit of working with the paint while it's still wet comes back from my days of working with oils I think because you can do a lot with oil paints while they're still wet but these are just acrylics I'm going to leave it at that I think I'm going to stop messing I just want to put a little bit more in to the greenery at the bottom and that's it okay I'm getting to the point now where I'm getting the idea of what I can do with acrylics and these moulds and aquacast, eco pour, whatever. This one's eco pour, my favourite one, as you know. So our initial experiment, that's kind of worked. This, I'm going to stick a butterfly on it. I don't know why, I just want to. Maybe I should just leave it as it is. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Should I have left it as it is? But I have got these little butterfly stickers. There we go. Uh, so they were, these were cheap ones from Timu. Now I'm going to try and get the back off it and uh, I will stick it on there. Right, now apparently if you stick tape on them, you have to pull the back off. Let's see. Hey! Yep. I, mean, I do I do use my uh, mats from my Cricut machine, they work really well as well. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> now, I've also got, which I know will work, because I've done it on other things before, and I'll show you at some point, I've got water slide transfers and all sorts that will work for it, putting onto uh, these surfaces. But what I really want to do now is have a clean up, let all these dry, and we'll try putting different surface, you know, sealant on them. I've got the wax and I've got the um, sealant from Creating Bloom. So we'll use that as well and we'll see what they each one looks like. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. At some point I will have a go at stenciling onto them just because I haven't done that for a long time as well. Don't let me forget. <laughs> right, back onto these are fully dried. Okay, so here's three of our pieces. Now, the other one, the angelfish, is still drying a little bit. I'm going to give it that little bit longer. Now, what I wanted to do was try some different ways of sealing these. You see, I had a bit of a mad fit with the colours that were left over on that one. <laughs> the typical way I, and I still think I like this best for sealing any of these eco resin alternative white powder type things is to use some furniture wax and this is the one that I use a lot it's from Homeware Designs which Claire's Crafty Corner put, put us all onto at least that's where I heard of them from <laughs> and it's really really nice stuff you just put it on give it a real good rub get into all your nooks and crannies and as I'm now getting into the bit where it's painted Cross your fingers, folks. I should go around the edge as well, obviously. Now, being a wax, this should give it a fairly waterproof sort of surface. And it should also be sort of pretty heat resistant. This, uh, I need to dig out my makeup sponges. These are cosmetic sponges, and I think this one's starting to break down. But clearly, that hasn't damaged the surface of my image. It hasn't taken off the outline of paste either, which I'm quite pleased about because I, wasn't, I really wasn't sure about the outline of paste. So I'm just going to take the surplus off with this clean kitchen sponge. 
and then I'll have a little clean up. But as you can see, let's blow all the bits out. That has protected those. Trust me, my nails are very, very hard with this much nail polish on and that is not coming off. So that works. Right, now the other stuff that I use a lot, I'm sure you've used me, seen me use this before, is, from, is Bloom Finish and it's from Create and Bloom. This gives a glossy finish. Now normally I would put this on with a brush. So let's try it with a brush first because I want to see if these acrylics smudge. So far so good. Okay, Claire, if you're watching this, I'm wondering if it's the paint she used. Whether whether doing it, putting the paint on by silk screening makes a difference, I don't know. It's only like stenciling though, isn't it? So I wouldn't have, really, I, I wouldn't have thought it would make any difference. Anyway, that isn't smudging. Now, I'm using, obviously this is also on Ecopore rather than Resincrete. I don't know what the difference is other than brand. But this is the Eco Pore one from uh, Just For You Online. Okay. The other thing I wanted to do, because I, and, and I know this works because I have tried it before, I confess. I've not tried brushing, although I normally brush this on, I, I'd not tried brushing it on over acrylic paints. Now, what I hadn't tried, and I thought it might be a solution to not smudging your paints, although it looks as if that looks okay anyway, was actually dabbing it on. So I'm going to use the end of the sponge that I hadn't used for my wax and try dabbing it on. Because I'm thinking, as this gives like a glossy finish, would it make like a stippled effect, which might be quite nice, rather than a brush strokey finish. So I had been meaning to try this with a strong feeling that it would work. And there's less chance of you smudging your paint if you're dabbing rather than rubbing. That was my thought anyway. A little bit more in the lid. This is drying already, I can see it absorbing into the surface. The other thing is, is I'm wondering when, uh, when Claire was using it, it was a jessamonite sealant. I don't, again, I don't know if that's any different. I know jessamonite itself is different because it's a two-parter, whereas this is, this stuff's just, it's got the catalyst actually in the powder, therefore you don't, with Ecopore and also that resin crete that Claire is using, you don't need to, um, it's not a two-parter, you just add the water because the stuff's already in the powder, the catalyst is. I hope I'm making sense. Anyway, um, so I don't know what the difference is, Claire, that's what I'm saying, whether it's something to do with any of that or not. Right, I'm going to get the angelfish. Part of the point of this one was that the paint is a lot thicker. So, same again though, I'm just going to brush over the... See, with a lot more paint on there, is it going to smudge? Harder to tell because it's kind of a, more of a sort of a splodgy image, but I don't think so. The, black's, the black is what I thought you'd see. So, yeah, anybody who's wondering what you can do in terms of painting onto your eco pores, eco pore itself or any of the other eco resin alternatives this is just a bit of food for thought for you i will do something a bit special with a bigger tray at some point i have got my big water slide transfers i still want to do something with as well um so yes anyway there we are i think we've we've got a few potential solutions for you there anyway if you found this interesting uh, check back at some point because i will do something with a bigger tray probably using something like these sort of techniques and we'll come up with something kind of very freehand, free drawn. 
I do want to do some stenciling. I've also got a whopping big frog stamp I want to do something with. Got loads coming up for you. So anyway, if you've liked this video and found it in any way helpful, or given you anything to think about, let me know. Put me some comments. Give me a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Thank you very much. And I will see you for the next making of a mess. Bye everyone.